Hey again from the kitchen folks, it's my second experimentation with uh, molten barley wine today. I'm going to make a slightly different brew to the last one and this time I'm going to make it a coffee flavoured one. So I'm using Ballyhoo crushed roasted barley. I've got just over 500 grams, I was trying to get 500 exactly. A little bit more. So I've got the barley in the pan and I'm just going to add uh, most, in fact I'm going to add all of this spring water. This is about 4 litres of spring water going in. I'm just going to give that a little stir around. Right, we've got the heat on and I need to let this simmer for about an hour and a half. So my next ingredient is just over 500 grams of this Ballyhoo crushed pale malt. So this has been at a high temperature just beneath simmering for over an hour and a half now. So I'm now going to add the next ingredient of the malt and there's that immediate aroma of the malt that really lovely brewery smell I feel like I'm having an Ovaltine steam bath and I'm gonna now leave that for another hour so this has been simmering away for another hour and I'm now going to turn the heat off and I'm going to let that stand now and just steep. Right, I'm just pouring this into a wok. It's a bit of a messy job and the reason I'm doing that is because I'm wanting to strain out now from here into the big pan again with my colander and a sieve and that fits better over the big pan than it does the wok. So I'm now trying to remove the, uh, the liquid and the solid basically, separate them apart. I've got a long way to go. It's a messy job. So my net result so far is a lot of spent grain and some liquid here. So I want to get this liquid now into the demijohn. So I've got a muslin bag over my funnel going into my demijohn to catch any little bits of debris that are still in the liquid. And it's a really thick syrupy liquid. So as you can see, the muslin bag has definitely served a purpose. That's full of bits of solids, which would have otherwise been in the uh, demijohn and that would have caused more sediment. So now I've got the not so glamorous job of doing the same thing again with, these, with the liquid that's in these grains, in a muslin bag, in my jug and hand squeezing to get all the liquid out. So here's the bag, it's time to squeeze and strain, not for the faint-hearted, it's pretty grim actually. So here's the net result of my endeavours, got half a demijohn full of thick black syrupy Molten barley liquid, there's the dried out grain and I've now got to make it coffee flavoured which I'm going to do with the addition of coffee and I'm going to add some more sugars, I've got some uh, white sugar and I'm going to add some golden syrup and I'm going to add some black treacle to really maximise the flavours and the tastes in this. I'm making my coffee with spring water incidentally because the tap water in Leeds is a bit chlorine -y, so I always use spring water when I'm brewing. So the first pot of coffee is done, as you can see, and I'm going to actually pour this into the golden syrup so it loosens it up and dissolves it. And I want to do the same with the black treacle. 
otherwise it takes ages to get them out. And then with the rest of it, I'll pop it into the brew. And I'm just now going to make one more pot of coffee. So the black treacle has now dissolved in the coffee, so I'll add that. Truly a black brew. And the same with the golden syrup. Okay, I've added 200 grams of sugar into this jug. And I'm going to add a little bit of coffee to the sugar in order to melt it. And I'm going to add some of that, I don't think I'll get it all in, into here. I think that's as much as I want to put in because I need to add the yeast and that will actually foam up a little bit. So I'm using Lalvin Champagne Yeast. It's going to make a strong um, barley wine, coffee wine, whatever it's going to be. Um, but it's not the right kind of yeast really for doing a beer with. It's a different kind of profile, but it will still hopefully make something that's going to be sparkling and delicious. Now, because I've added so much sugar into this, uh, I'm hoping that will counterbalance the fact that this yeast is quite a dry yeast in terms of the wine it can make. So I'm just going to agitate now just to get that yeast to sink and start to react. Because I've filled the damage on quite high, I'm actually going to stand it in the sink to begin with. And we'll come and have a look at it in half an hour and see if that yeast has had an effect. So the yeast has activated, fermentation has begun, airlock is in, and now I need to leave this for two or three weeks to ferment before bottling. Just a very quick update. The malt, barley and coffee wine is officially the fastest fermenting wine I have ever known. Look at how much gas is coming out of that. That's ridiculous. If I compare it to the just malt and barley one that I did, That's obviously much slower and that's more what I would expect. So wow, this is going to be a good brew. Good morning from the kitchen folks. As you can see I've got three different brews on the go and I'm just going to top them up a little bit today with some more spring water and sugar just to get the maximum amount of wine out I can from the Demijohns. So I've just got some spring water in a saucepan and I'm going to add about 200 grams of white sugar. There we go, that's enough. And I just want that to dissolve now in the water. Okay, so you can see that the water has warmed and the sugar has dissolved. It's now a nice syrupy solution. I'm going to turn the heat off because I don't want it to get too hot because that won't do the yeast any good. So here's the malt, barley and coffee. I can actually really smell the coffee coming out of that as well, which is quite exciting. Okay, I'm gonna pop that one back in. And off it goes. Okay, I'm just going to leave these now and make sure that there's no eruptions before putting them back for a little bit more fermentation. So there's been no disastrous floods and I've got them all back in the living room now. So I shall be coming back to them in a week or two's time. Hey from the kitchen folks, it's bottling day for the malt, barley and coffee wine.
So this is an unexpectedly early bottling day. It's only a few days since uh, I added the extra sugar and water to this and the fermentation went really fast. It was going pop, pop, pop. And then about 24 hours ago, it just slowed to a virtual death. And now it's hardly moving at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bottle it into these with a little bit of sugar and hope to get a secondary fermentation within them. And if I get a secondary fermentation, hopefully that'll make it a little bit stronger and uh, also give it a bit more body. So once I've bottled these, I'm going to need to leave them for a little while. Now, I don't know if you can tell on here, but there's a heck of a lot of sediment in here. In fact, it goes right to where my finger is, which if you look at that, that's almost a quarter of the damage on. So I'm not going to get any more than four bottles out of this and I might only get three and a bit. So I'm going to add a generous two teaspoonfuls of sugar into each of these bottles. And I'm really hoping that this will kickstart the fermentation and give me a secondary fermentation. These are pressurised bottles, so they'll be fine. Okay, so cork out. So we'll get that siphon tube in. I can barely see it, so I need to make sure it doesn't go into the sediment too much. Here's the fun bit. Oh, it's like crude oil. That is some syrupy stuff. This is definitely the blackest, inkiest brew I've ever done. It's like tar. Okay, so I've got four full bottles out of it. There's a lot left in there with the sediment and I'm just trying to filter a bit of sediment through a, a coffee filter paper with limited success. Uh, I've got my corks now softening, my plastic corks uh, in hot water. And the next thing now is to get them into the bottles. Here goes. One. Three. And four. Cages. So I need to apply cages to all of these. Okay. One. Two. Three. There we go. All four done. So there we go. I just need to label these and then I'm going to leave them for a month and then I shall sample the first one. So I'll catch you in a month's time, folks. Let's see how they turn out. Hey, folks, back again. So this is now one month and one day since bottling. So I'm going to have a sample and I don't mind admitting I am nervous. So I've originally called this malt, barley and coffee imaginatively because that's what's in it. I don't know whether it's going to be like a barley wine, a porter, I have no idea. I don't know if it's going to be fizzy, I don't know if it's going to be cloudy, I don't know if it's going to explode when I open it. I'm actually quite nervous about doing this. It's my first beer from grain that I've ever opened. So here goes. I guess you could say there's life in it. <laughs> oh. 
Bloody hell. Well, it's definitely fizzy. Wow. I hope that was worth waiting 20 minutes for. It's actually delicious. It's a coffee porter. You could have given me this in some fancy craft beer bottle and I would have just believed it was genuinely the real article. So I'm now worried about the rest of the beers that I've bottled that they're all going to explode. But um, do you know what? This is actually quite good. It tastes amazing. It's got fizz on the tongue, it's got syrupiness, and it's got coffee. It's all a learning curve. Hopefully in future I'll get better, but I've definitely got some bottle bombs to come. So be it. It tastes good. It smells good. And it don't look too bad actually. So cheers. Okay, just to see if it was a one-off with the bottle bomb, because that was only a half full bottle. This is a full bottle this time, so this is either going to be more explosion. I don't know, what else? <laughs> Very carefully. Let's see what it's like. Yeah, it was lively to say the least. But anyway, cheers. <laughs> Lessons to be learned. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the home and garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv. Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. -S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.